Hello, and welcome to Frontend and Figma Magic, building a connected UI kit for Emulsify. Today's talk at a couple days is being presented by me, Randy Ost, the creative director at Four Kitchens. This talk couldn't have happened without Brian Lewis, our senior frontend engineer who has been working on me with this endeavor. So in, in the talk today, uh, I'm going to lead with a quick reminder of the challenges that design and development teams face together. Then we're going to talk about design tokens. And lastly, we're going to share with you how we keep Emulsify UI kit in sync automatically between Figma and the code. At the end, we'll talk about challenges and answer any questions that you might have. Creating websites has always had the challenge of navigating a broad divide, visual design and front-end development. Designers use tools like Figma, Sketch, Photoshop, and they create static layouts. Even with modern prototyping tools, they are at heart a, co a composition of static layouts. Front-end developers, on the other hand, define everything they do in code and have to make layouts work within the flow of the DOM. So when a designer needs to change a component's color, text size, or any other detail in your style guide, a developer needs to process those changes into code. If your team uses a design tool like Figma, then designers will often create a sheet that outlines the text color or text sizes, colors, and other elements of a project. Then a developer has to review those choices and begin a tedious process of copying and pasting every update to the code base. Now, once upon a time, our team used Zeppelin. Um, this provides a hand. This is an app that provides a handoff between um, Figma and front-end developers. But even using uh, Zeppelin's features, we found that design decisions were often falling through the cracks. So, one of the biggest problems that we encountered was that front-end developers were being forced to make design decisions. The materials being handed off to them made assumptions that were not showing up in the documentation. For example, designs would have inconsistent spacing between elements, and the developer would have to figure out how to resolve it. We were finding that our projects were accruing large amounts of design debt. This design debt would result in some things needing to be refactored in order to fix it. What we really needed was a shared language. So enter design tokens. Uh, so uh, you may or may not have heard of design tokens. They're a recent phenomenon in the design system scene, and they were introduced in 2016 by Salesforce. So design tokens are names, uh, are names used to express design decisions in your organization's design language. Those names are meant to be used and understood by humans like you and me. Design decisions can be a color, a typeface, a border radius, an icon, a font size, a gradient, or even an animation duration. The design system is your land, and design tokens are the language people use to communicate design decisions with each other. Now, design tokens even fit neatly into atomic design. You can think of them as electrons. So design tokens can be simple, like for instance, color text uh, equals black, uh, this is uh, this sets the text color across the site, um, as long as we use that the variable color text. Now, anytime we change it, the text color throughout the site will change. Um, this is a simple example of a design token, so let's ramp up the complexity. There are many ways to organize and define your design tokens. For us, we have three different kinds of tokens, uh, descriptive, semantic, and component specific. So now let's say that a designer comes up with a color palette, like a gradient of blues and purples for use throughout the site. We assign token names to the colors that describe what they are. We refer to these as descriptive or primitive design tokens. The name of the token describes what it looks like or how it behaves. So, uh, so yeah, so this is an example right here um, where the name of the design token describes what it looks like or how it behaves. So if the primary color for the site is color blue 500, do you really want to do a find and replace across your projects to, to change it to color blue 900 whenever there's a design change? No one wants to do that. It's error prone. It causes problems. So what we do is we define another layer of design tokens based on their purpose in the code. So for instance, color primary is assigned color blue 500. So this means that the presentation of this project uses these semantic design tokens so that our code is more flexible. 
Semantic design tokens are even more useful when you have several different entities that are using the same look and feel, but in different ways. We do a lot of work in higher education, and a lot of our partners are schools or centers that want to have a shared look with the overall institution while still having their own identity. In this example, the School of Nursing is using the middle blue and a slightly off middle purple, while the School of Medicine is using a very dark and a very light blue, all from the same design system. So the next uh, level of tokens that we have are component specific tokens. This is the last of the three categories that we use and judging from the name, I bet you know exactly what we use them for. So these are tokens that we use to define elements of a component. So let's go to a common example, a button. There are many properties that a button can have, font size, font family, padding, border radius, there, there's a lot of them. Uh, there are a lot of things that we can turn into design tokens. In fact, you'll usually only see these kinds of variables and frameworks that are intended to be adapted by the user, like Material Design or Bootstrap or the Emulsify UI Kit. The Emulsify UI Kit has two parts. There's a Figma file and a GitHub repository. First, I'm going to talk about the Figma part. So about a year ago, a senior product designer at GitHub named Jan Six wrote a plugin for Figma called Figma Tokens. This plugin does two things that changed the game. First, it gave designers a better way, a more robust way, to add, edit, and modify design token decisions. We've always been able to manage colors and fonts in Figma, but now we can manage the selection of stroke thicknesses, border radiuses, or rad, rad eye, never sure of that plural, or drop shadows. It gives designers more consistency in the work that we do. The second thing that Figma tokens uh, plugin did, and this is really the groundbreaking thing, is that it allowed all of those design tokens to be exported as JSON directly to GitHub. Now, Every time a designer pushes, uh, or sorry, every time a designer makes a change to the design tokens, they can push an update directly to the repository. And with the right automation tools, a front end engineer doesn't even have to touch a thing. The JSON format that Figma tokens outputs needs a little of attention before it can be used in the front end. Figma tokens, the plugin in GitHub, allows token values that reference other values. For example, our spacing scale, shown here, is defined by multiplying the base value, which is set in the small variable. This is great for creating scales, but not so great for converting JSON into CSS. The solution to this is to run a converter, supplied by the author of Figma tokens, to convert the JSON into a universally recognized format. The format that we use is the Amazon Style Dictionary. So style dictionary is a build system that allows you to define styles once in a way for any platform or language to consume and a single command exports these rules to all the places that you need them from CSS to SAS, uh, even Android and iOS. For the curious, the W3C uh, has a design tokens group that is working on a standard format for design tokens. Exciting stuff. Every time a designer pushes to the UI kit repository, we have a workflow that fires and runs a script that converts the design tokens from the Figma tokens format to the style dictionary format. Then we run style dictionary to output everything as CSS variables. We, now we've been shipping a component library with Emulsify since the beginning of the project. Part of the reason for this is so that we can lean on best practices, carry forward accessibility refinements, and start projects without having to start from scratch. With the Emulsify UI kit, we're starting to connect components with design tokens. For example, this is the CSS for the button component in the UI kit. Notice that we're using the component level tokens to define a lot about how the button should display. Now, the trick with something like this is to find the sweet spot in the complexity. We don't want to overwhelm a designer by making them define too many things, but we also want to have a solid integration with design tokens. Our approach at the moment is generally to cover spacing, color, and typographical design tokens for components. Now, as the community uses this and gives us feedback, we're going to make improvements and changes to that. So now we're going to switch to a live demo. Let me go ahead and get out of here.
going to close that. Oh, let me hide that. All right, so we are actually going to start off in Figma, and then we're going to take a look at the UI repository in GitHub. So um, we're in Figma right now. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Figma tokens plugin. Um, within the UI kit right here, um, what we have is um, an example page. Uh, and this example page that we have here makes use of the tokens that we have. So for instance, it may be a little bit hard to see because of the size of the video, but there is a, a global collection, there is a semantic collection, and then we have component collections uh, within the plugin. So what we can do uh, to make changes, let's say you're a designer and you like make a copy of this and it's time to start working on the client's repository, what we can do is we can go in and we can start changing colors. So for instance, right now, um, this is all kind of emulsify themed. Why don't we go ahead and make this the primary color green. I'm going to go ahead and do that and hit update. You'll see that Everything that was color primary just got updated. I've got color primary light. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a pick a light green color, green 200, hit update. Um, and you'll see that changes. And I'm going to do the same thing here with our color primary dark. I'm going to pick uh, a green, a dark green color out of our palette and hit update. Um, those colors have changed. Let's take a look at the text colors here. The text dark color um, is colors blue dark. I'm going to make it um, colors primary dark and hit update. And now it is a dark green. And then the headings color, I want the headings color, which currently is using colors primary dark. I'm going to actually uh, have it use color primary uh, and hit OK. And here we have, uh, we've already made updates. You see everything has changed. As a designer, I can take a look at this and then start to be like, oh, well, here in this card, this header you know, it's a little bit hard to read. Um, and I can fix that at the component level. Um, it currently doesn't, this currently isn't a component, so I can't show that example. However, you can see everywhere else those changes have been made. Now let's look at the button here. The button is still blue. So let's go ahead and take a look at the button. Um, let's make the background color for the button. Um, we're going to go ahead and have this be uh, primary dark and hit update and boom, it just changed. And let's go ahead and change the border radius on this. So the button radius is defined here. I'm gonna hit edit token. Right now it's set for radius small. I'm gonna use radius large and I'm gonna hit update. Um, and whenever I do, we have nice rounded corners. Great, so I've made these, oh, you know what? There's one last design change that I want to make. Um, and that design change is to the text. So I'm going to search in here for font family. Um, oh, let me close that up. And I need to go to the tokens for font family because I'd like to change the font that's in use here. There are a lot of typographical um, choices or tokens in here. So there's font primary and font secondary, font primary, going to edit the token. Right now it's it's um, enter. We're going to actually make it Georgia uh, and we're going to hit update. And when we do, we hit update, hit yes. And it is 100% making a liar out of me. Um, I did this before. I guess this is a problem with live demos. Um, but if we change this font primary, um, it should cascade here in Figma. Uh, live demos, they never go the way you want to. So let's say this is, these are the changes that we want. Down here at the bottom, there's a little um, up arrow that when you hover over it says push to GitHub. It has a little blue icon that kind of indicates that there are changes. Whenever I click on this, um, it tells me what, what repository I'm pushing to. I can submit a, a commit message and I can tell it what branch to go to, which now brand, being able to choose the branch is really nice because you don't necessarily want a designer pushing from Figma directly into like whatever branch you deploy from, right? No, no one wants that. Um, so you can have them, uh, we use, for instance, a, a branch called Figma. 
You can call it whatever you want. Um, and whenever you hit push, uh, it will push those changes to the repository, uh, and the designer will be offered a chance to, of creating a pull request from that. So they can actually create their own pull request as well, which is really nice. So when these changes get pushed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, close, well, hide Figma for right now, and we're going to head over um, this what we're looking at right now in GitHub, we're looking at the repository. Um, as a designer, I actually created this pull request directly from um, from Figma. Um, we have a, uh, this isn't filled in because I, I just didn't. Um, but basically what it is, is it is going to show us what has changed. Um, and we can see here font family's primary has changed to Georgia. Um, at, in the tokens.sass file, well, .scss file. Um, and we can see that the Figma tokens JSON has changed, um, and then a couple of other little, like, little bit of data change there. And because this repository is set up with Netlify, we can take a look at those changes directly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the default Emulsify UI kit. So this right here is the basic page that's been coded up to uh, match the Figma file. You can see every all of the copy and generally the presentation is the same. The only difference is, is that it is actually live code, which means that like we can move the, the page around and take a look at it for real and see how that reacts. Um, and uh, dynamically created by um, all of our automations, we've got all of the changes here. Our font is Georgia. The greens have changed. Our, our button has changed. Um, and everything has carried over. Um, and so that's really nice. Um, and that is the power of the UI kit. Uh, I am going to open up Keynote just one more time and get this, uh, just because I've got uh, an ending slide. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue. We can talk about challenges or answer questions from you. Um, so thank you very much.